Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Somos Biology. And in this video lecture, we are going to talk about the scanning electron microscopy principle and the basics of scanning electron microscopy and how scanning electron microscopy works. That is SEM, right? So what about scanning electron microscopy? In the last lecture, we have talked about the transmission electron microscopy or TEM. So I want you to watch my video on electron microscopy basics and details explained because once you see that video, many important information about the electron microscopy will get clear in your mind. I hope you watch that video. So I'll resume from now. In scanning electron microscopy, we are going to visualize uh, the sample or the specimen in three dimensional shape as it is, right? Because in transmission electron microscopy, we can watch a sample and their subcellular structures and organelle structures in much greater details with very high magnification as well as very, very good resolution. That's why we use electron microscopy over light microscopy to visualize a very tiny specimen. But in case of scanning electron microscopy, the idea is to see uh, any 3D specimen and to get a 3D image, in-depth image, high resolution image of that subject. Now, this was the structure of a transmission electron microscope, the uh, instrumentation of a transmission electron microscope, where which is very, very simple and very similar to that of the light microscope. We have a source, we have condenser, we have sample, we have objective, we have eyepiece, then detector. In case of scanning electron microscopy, uh, this uh, instrument is little different. So we have this source which is transtain filament kind, same kind of electron source, electron generation source. And then uh, in case of transmission electron microscopy, this is stain, remember, we had this uh, condenser lens. But between uh, the tungsten source and, and condenser, in case of uh, this kind of scanning electron microscopy, we have what is known as an anode, okay, we have anode. Okay, an electrode, a positively charged electrode which can diffract electron towards a specific direction Okay, because electron is negatively charged. Now after that we have the condenser, same thing here, we have the condenser. Now after this condenser, what we have here is another extra thing that is known as scan coil. Totally different thing. Then what we have? We have objective. So imagine this four. Always remember this four thing. A C S O. Axo. A C S O. This is the way to remember. A anode. C for condenser. S for scan coil. And O for objective lens. And then after objective lens, we have this sample. Because right after the electron hits the sample, the scattered electrons will be detected by the detector. Okay, so now let us look at the working principle of scanning electron microscopy. We know that electron microscopy works based on the idea of the electron what is which is generated from the source which is heated tungsten filament and a lot of these electrons uh, they are negatively charged but they are not focused. So to make them focused, we need more energy. So we heat them and we also use a 20 kilowatt, uh, kilovolt, sorry, 20 kilovolt or 20,000 volt of energy to make them forming as a single beam of electron. And anode as it's positively charged helps the electrons to align in a single thin electron beam. And that single thin electron beam enters into the condenser and then through condenser hits into the scan coil and then via scan coil through objective hits the sample okay and once it hits the sample sometimes they also have a diaphragm present there uh, like condenser and diaphragm in that case but once it hits the sample the idea of scanning electron microscopy is to scatter the electron and scan the sample specimen, the surface of the sample specimen based on the different depth of field. Okay. So let's imagine now, let's let me draw this sample specimen in here. And this is a three-dimensional sample. It looks something like uh, it has this huge bulk here, 
and structures like this let's say this is a sample and once electron is coming the electron can hit this bump that are present on the surface of the sample or the clefts that are present on the surface of the sample there are these two regions okay the bulgier regions and then this cleft regions so the electron once hitting the surface electron is always hitting the surface and they are getting diffracted different types of diffracted electrons are gathered by the detector okay which is connected to the sensor let's say cmos sensor is going to give us a image what kind of image a three dimensional image of the sample now once the electron is getting scattered what we call as an electron escape that means when the electron is hitting the sample surface how many of the electron are scattered out and how many of them retained right so during the cleft regions of the surface less less electron escape is done and where the electron uh, electron hitting the bulgier ring bulgier places of the sample then what we call it more electron escape more electron escape is possible from those large and high regions of the surface and lower side of the surface less electron escape is there so as a result of this high and low electron escape a differential image can be captured by the cmos sensor and projected as a three dimensional image the image that is projecting the presence of the different surface component of the specimen and different surface component means we are going to get a overall three dimensional picture but we sometimes need to rotate like slide uh, the specimen in different places so that all the surface of the specimen can be covered by the electron beam and we are going to obtain a clear data of the 3d image because we are going to take the 3d pic uh, i mean picture of individual surface and then we can compile it with a software to get a three dimensional picture of that we can clearly get that and we can not only use this 3d modeling of scanning electron microscopy in case of biological specimens but you can also use that in case of any non biological specimen as well we can use the scanning electron microscopy to find out the structure of crystals like salt salt crystals or let's say uh, any other salt crystals uh, drugs that that are developed we need to check their surface and how they work so we can see those structures as well as well as you can also see biological samples quite well any other samples in their 3d pictures quite well uh, you can use a bacteria and you can also see how the bacteria looks like in the 3d and the bacterial interaction with the surface of the skin or the bacterial interaction with the endothelial cell of our intestine all these things can be clearly visualized with the help of the scanning electron microscopy if you can use that sample specimen directly as a 3d model but the big problem here is that in both case of this scanning electron microscopy and transmission electron microscopy the sample specimen preparation requires us to kill the sample so any living sample if you are going to use they are going to be killed with the help of electron microscopy but keeping this disadvantage aside the scanning electron microscopy as well as the transmission electron microscopy both are very good way to give us a very crisp and detailed data of a specimen with much greater resolution but the use of these two types of electron microscopy are quite different while in transmission electron microscopy we want to see a detailed magnified image and much resolved resolve image of the specimen but in case of scanning electron microscopy we are going to stick to the three dimensional picture of the sample specimen as it is but in both these cases we use the similar type of tungsten filament to to radiate the electron to, to produce the electron due to the addition of the heat and then we use elect like a lot of voltage 20000 kilo 20000 volt or 20 kilovolt of energy to focus this electron sometimes we use anode like in scanning electron microscopy use anode to arrange the electron as a beam to focus it through the scanning coil and ultimately reach the sample specimen and it can penetrate the sample specimen at different micron level this is another big advantage of electron microscopy because in this electron microscopy uh, the sample as you can see that uh, if the electron is moving inside of the sample it needs to move much depth here to receive the different places this place but in this case need to invade on a few uh, micron but this electron beam can reach different micron of depth to reach the different portions of the samples body to capture the images but give us a better three-dimensional picture 
So that's all about the scanning electron microscopy. I believe you understand the process. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more and more videos like that. If you don't like the video, please hit the dislike button. But please watch the complete series of microscopy lectures because it's going to help you immensely for the preparation of biophysics chapters. So that's all about scanning electron microscopy. See you in the next video. Bye.